All right, everybody, welcome. It's that time of year at last. Uh, the road to nationals, right? We're about a week and a half out from traveling down on Friday up to Western Michigan on Friday and the start of matches Saturday morning on April 9th. Uh, I'm Wes Peters, coach of UC and director of league expansion for the NCDA. I'm joined by Colby Briceland. Colby? Hi, I'm the coach of uh, University of Akron and I'm also the director of officiating. I'm happy to be here, Wes. Awesome. Yeah, I'm happy to uh, outdraft you, buddy. <laughs> we'll see. That'll be uh, to be determined. That's factual. Uh, so before we get started, we've got a few things to plug um, relating to nationals and think content and stuff coming out. So Colby, do you want to start? Yeah. Um, first of all, I know I sound like a broken record, but we do need four representatives from each team to have taken and passed the rulebook quiz before nationals. Um, we will be enforcing that just like we did at Akron's tournament um, in February. Um, and also any alumni who come to officiate games need to have taken and passed that as well. Um, we will be checking anybody who officiates any matches to have taken and passed the rulebook quiz. Yep. And correct me if I'm wrong, Colby, it's a 24 out of 30. That's an 80%. 80%. Um, another thing we uh, wanted to plug as well before we get started was the uh, All-Star Game will also have a draft format just like we are doing. Um, Rebecca Chappell and Catherine Mays will be the two um, drafting players for their respective teams. Yep. Yeah, be on the lookout for that as well. That'll be coming, I believe, later in the week, um, if not this weekend at the latest. Uh, in addition to that, I've got some content to plug. Uh, I have been doing some player spotlights for each team. Uh, it is in the captain's club. You know, I need you guys to send me one to two of your best rookies and then four to five of your like key players. Please don't put rookies on both lists. Keep them separate. The goal is to highlight as many players as we can from each team. Um, and then a quick blurb about how you got your team's feeling, you know, mindset, goals going into nationals. Um, more detail on the captain's club on my post. You'll have to find it by now, but uh, go find it and do it if you have not sent me anything. I think I have about nine or ten teams content at this point, so I've, I'm off to a good start, but I want to get every team before Nationals if I can. In addition to that, uh, be on the lookout ASAP for... Uh, we're going to be doing March Madness-type polls on Instagram to determine uh, Baller of the Month. And... Not only are we going to have one baller of the month, but we're going to have two. It's We're going to do a men's and a women's bracket. So we will have co-ballers of the month uh, for March. And last, uh, second to last, uh, be on the lookout Friday at noon, which you guys have all been waiting for, I'm sure, is finally unveiling the schedule for nationals on Saturday and who each team will play. Um, that'll come out at noon Friday. Be on the lookout for that. And... One more thing before we get started, at the end of this pod, we will be unveiling the All-Star Game jerseys uh, for each team, so stick around to the end of the podcast if you want to see that, so you get a sneak peek of what the All-Star Game jerseys look like. Uh, without further ado, let's let's get into this draft. Colby, you won Rock, Paper, Scissors for first pick, and so you get to start, my friend. For the first pick in the all-star game draft i am taking the longest reigning baller of the month in ncda history <laughs> that's right i'm taking dylan greer from osu oh man um, what a pick i think dylan is not only one of the uh top tier players in the league but also one of the most slept on as well i mean everybody knows his catching ability and his court presence is great but he gets really overlooked as a thrower for his team. His his release is so quick and it's his throw is so accurate that he oftentimes gets overlooked because he's not a very powerful or exaggerated thrower. But I think he's one of the best players in the league by far, and I'm happy to have uh, gotten to pick him as my number one. Not a bad pick, Colby. Dylan is a great all-around player. Thank you. Uh, so – the way we're doing it, snake style for the first round. So since Colby got the first pick, I get the first, or the next two picks. So the second and third overall picks, and then we're going one by one after that, one each. Uh, so with my first overall pick, uh, I've got to give some love to one of my best friends and the director of nationals. You know it. I'm picking Peter Bro 
perhaps a homer pick, but Peter's been in the league for a long time. He's definitely one of the smartest players in the league. I don't think there's a player who understands strategy at this point better than him. And, uh, you know, teaching a young team, Peter's done a great job this year, and he's he's deserving. Dr. Peter Bro. That's at true. That as well. MD. That's a gr- great pick. Great pick. Uh, Peter has definitely MD. been, you know, a uh, very tenured player. You know, like you said, I don't know if anybody has a higher – strategy IQ than he does just being around the league as long as he does. It's also good picture, number one. Yep, yep. Uh, Number two, we're going to stick in the vein of being a homer. I have to get these out of the way early. I'm going to continue my uh, relentless call out for um, MVP candidate, and I'm picking my own uh, player, assistant captain for the UC Bearcats, Corey Heitman. Uh, Corey is just an amazing all-around player. He just plays with such a tenacity and fearlessness uh, playing in the mid-right court for us. Um, Huge 12-6 soccer-style throw uh, that if you're slow getting back in transition, you will get annihilated by him. So I I, I had to pick Corey. That's a good good pick, you know, to, you know, off the top here. Corey is one of the players that I've been, like, high on since – the beginning of the season, um, you know, his quick transition style. He's just, he's so fast and so accurate with his transition kills that that's, that's a good pick, Wes. I, I can support that one because I would have taken him had you not. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got him before you could then. For, uh, for my second pick, I'm going to take it, what is, who is, in my opinion, um, the best player in the East right now, um, Penn State's own Christian I apologize if I butcher your last name, Ian uh, Nuzelli, uh, really shot out into the scene uh, when Penn State had that really, really good run a couple months ago, um, you know, when they beat Towson, beat JMU, and, and all that. Christian has really become uh, one of the faces of the East Coast um, region, and I'm happy to have, uh, you know, get to watch him play at Nationals in person, because I've... I don't recall seeing him in person, but not only, you know, watch him play at Nationals, but have uh, coach him on my all-star team as well. No, I, I can't think of a better, a better pick right there. Christian is just a great all-around player. I don't think he gets the credit mm-hmm. he deserves being uh, out on the East Coast, especially, you know, from teams west of that. I'm sure every East Coast team will give him his due, but uh, we just really haven't seen him out west at this point. So I, I think that's a steal of a pick, Colby. Um, so as I mentioned, we're going one, 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 one from, for the here on out. So with my next pick, not a Homer pick, although you could still argue it technically, uh, I'm going with perhaps, uh, who would have been an MVP had COVID not happened. Um, and definitely the rookie of the year at the end of the COVID or at the end of when the year COVID started, Michigan State's Barry Butler, the third, or they like to say BB three Barry is just He's another phenomenal player, right? Uh, The biggest thing of his game I've noticed this year is just his sheer court presence. It's he's not always the one making the throw for them, right? He's relying a lot on teammates to pick up some slack this year. But as he goes, the team goes, right? He his like I said, his court presence is just so like commanding, and um, you have to know where he is on the court. And if you ignore him or you know let him lull you to sleep, he'll take you out in a heartbeat. So. I think Barry's a steal at the third third round. That's a that's a good pick. Um, Barry is one of those guys that just commands attention, like you said, mm-hmm. and it allows the his supporting cast to thrive because he just brings all the attention. He brings multiple team throws, multiple reset throws in his direction, and so it allows his supporting cast to really shine. That's a really good pick um, of Barry Butler the third um, for you. I'm gonna. Go so uh, for my third pick, uh, I'm going to go with the homer picks now. I think Clay Eggleston, um, the captain and Prentice Macron. Um, he's really the lead of this Zips team. Um, you know, when Akron had to rebuild, Clay was there in the center. Clay has really brought this team, you know, what used what was a, a young core team to like the forefront of the state of Ohio. Um, you know, we're not. We're not, you know, the top team in Ohio, but we're definitely, you know, one of the more strong core teams of that region. And Clay is a huge that. His his throws really developed and, you know, um, 
his catching ability is, you know, one of the best in this league that we've seen. So I'm going to pick Clay as my pick. No, another good pick. Uh, Clay's a phenomenal leader on the court as well. His, like you said, his catching is amazing. Um, his throws come a long way since his freshman year. Um, no, I know we're we're picking homer picks, but Clay Clay's a good choice uh, for any team. So yeah. my last homer pick, and I'm sure you all knew this was coming as well, is going to be none other than who I believe to be another All American for the uh, University of Cincinnati Bearcats, Matt Rosinski or Ski. Uh, double zero for for UC. He's just big lefty hammer of an arm with a ridiculous amount of curve on his throw. Um, uh, he plays center left for for us, and he's just like Corey. He's fearless, running down the court, char- charging on the counters, and an- another player that'll make you pay if you're slow getting back. Um, yeah, I-, I love Matt's game, and I think he's been probably our second best player this year. Yeah, I, su- I support that pick. As, uh, watching the first tournament at OSU, I pulled you aside and asked who that kid was because I didn't know who he was. And I was like, he's going to be a force in this league yep. this season. And I, I have been nothing but right about Cincinnati all year. And so happy to see, you know, one of my picks in the beginning of the season for one of your top tier players to really pan out. So, yeah, no, he and he's um, he's a senior this year. I'm trying to talk him into going getting his MBA uh, at UC, but. He joined in February, the beginning of February, the year COVID it happened and shut things down. So he really only played, I think, two tournaments, one or two tournaments. That, I can't remember one or two tournaments that year. And all you know, he's on the team through COVID. So for him to like really spring on the se- on the scene like he has this season, um, it, it's nothing short of a testament to just his sheer talent and athleticism. The kid and just like quick like dodgeball acumen he he's so good for having such little experience like this is like this is his first full year of dodgeball yeah which is insane to think about with how far he's come okay um i'm gonna go my fourth pick my last homer pick uh pj antelic of akron um pj is our Corey. he's our fearless player he's always the first one up on the throw line uh, whenever we're charging in transition, um, one of our you know better transition players, one of our more athletic guys, PJ was somebody we leaned on heavily um, you know, during our rebuilding, and it shows now because of how far he's come in his leadership and his dodgeball IQ. Um, it's probably one of the better um, you know well-rounded players on our team, and so it's no surprise that he's an all-star, and I'm going to take him. Um, at my number four or number five, I mean, four. Yeah. All right, we got the Homer picks out of the way, Colby. Uh, yeah, and that's time to get some get some steam. Right. Yep, time to pick uh, people who we don't know and love. Uh, so with my first pick, um, in, or my fifth pick, I should say, I'm going to take the captain of JMU, uh, Mr. Drew Funk, a great player. Okay. Just another fast all around good player. Uh, he's really um, stepped into a big leadership role for JMU this year. And I think done really well for them is certainly this second semester um, really turning around a, a, a disappointing, frankly, first fall semester. I think in their six actual matches they've played, they've only dropped one point this semester. Um, and that I think that's just a big testament to how good Drew is and his leadership on the court. All right. I think Drew Funk is a great pick, especially, um, you know, seeing as how JMU got a really slow start um, in the beginning of the semester or the season. Uh, Drew Funk has been integral in the Dukes, like, rolling through the second semester. Like you said, only dropping one point. Like, that's insane. Yeah. Um, so, in the same vein of your pick, I'm going to pick another JMU uh, player. Oh. I'm going with Devin Eschenberg um, for my squad. Uh, Evan is one of the more tenured players in the league and one of the better throwers and catchers for the Dukes. Um, you know, his dodgeball IQ is super high. He's an extremely athletic player, and I think he's going to um, really be a, a core part of this uh, all-star team I'm putting together. No, uh, Evan's a great pick. Yeah, like you said, one of the more tenured players in the league, I think only at this point. Peter and Sam Palumbo have been around longer than him. I think um, 
Yeah, no, uh, Evan's great. He he knows what he's doing on the court at any given point, and he he's an absolute playmaker. So so he's a great pick. Um, with my sixth pick, I'm gonna be taking another leader of a big team on the East Coast. Um, really aggressive player, phenomenal arm, um, big big presence, loud voice out on the court, uh, and that's Jake Friedman from Towson. Um, just like I said, all the things I just said, um, he's he's a great player, and I think he really fits the mold of of the lineup I'm drafting. So, I agree. Jake is uh, Jake's a huge part of the uh, the Towson offense, and you know he he has probably one of the bigger impacts on that team when he's not on the court. You know they're not rolling, and so it just shows how you know big of a piece he is for that roster and that's a good pick um i'm gonna go with the player who in my opinion uh won the spartans their michigan dodgeball cup i'm going with jack girling for msu that's a steal i think i think that you know he's one of the more slept on players in the league and you know back to our comments of barry because barry's a loud presence Jack can just pick people off on his side and, you know, he's got a very, very good arm, very strong and accurate throw. Um, one of the better, you know, arms on that MSU roster. Um, I'm going to take him, you know, in, in my opinion, pretty late and, you know, pretty good steal uh, for my team. No, another great pick. Uh, Jack falling to the sixth round is, a, I know we memed a little bit with Homer picks, but it's, yeah. it's a steal nonetheless. Um, like you said, just a great player, big power lefty, lot of hook on that throw, um, and and does a lot of work for them. I'm going to take with my seventh pick overall. Uh, I mentioned his name a minute ago, and he is a, yet another big arm that I'm adding to this lineup, and that is Ohio State's Sam Palumbo. He's Ooh. been around the league for ages, and his arm, I think, has somehow even gotten faster as he's aged. So. I agree. I agree. He's uh he's one of the you know more tenured players, as you said, probably just mm-hmm. next to Peter. But yeah, he's also like a commanding presence on the court for for the Buckeyes. It's it's insane how his arm hasn't fallen off by now. But yeah, he just throws angry, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. with a purpose every single yep. time. Um, for my uh my next pick, I'm going uh Tyler Peach for Grand Valley State. Um, I don't know how the GV players uh, fell this low in the draft, um, but Bye. I think he's he's a very, very um, just multi-talented player. His catching, his his court, you know, awareness and dodgeball IQ, and as well as you know his arm. He's got that baseball throw. You can tell he's played baseball for years. Mm-hmm. Um, just very, very powerful throw and accurate. Um, one of the, you know, better players in this league. Um, and I just think that, you know, he's one of the reasons for GVSU success this year. Everybody thought they'd kind of have a, like a, you know, uh, a lull in their success, but they really haven't. And it's largely in part to Tyler Peach. Yeah, no doubt that taking the captain of GV is like always a good pick, no matter what year it is. Um, and yeah, no, I think they've, they fall into the seventh round because we're biased. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, I'm going to pass over GV's other player to take, uh, to be a little bit of an Ohio homer here and take uh, Bowling Green State's Cole Wilson. Cole's been another great player for them for a few years now. Um, big, strong arm, another good mid court presence uh, type player makes great catches. He, he's just a really strong all-around player, in my opinion. Yes. Yes. Great pick. And the way he pinches the ball with two fingers is just insane. Yeah, I, um, I do not understand his hand strength. No, no. Um, good pick. I am going to uh, bring together the Laker players. I'm taking oh, Ben no. Smart. Um, one of the front runners for MVP this season, even though you know he's been battling some injuries, I think Ben is, you know, Ben injured is better than most of the league at full health. Um, I'm taking Ben Smart. 
No, uh, former MVP, you know, never, never a bad pick to take Ben Smart. Um, but yeah, I mean, I stayed away from Ben personally because of the injury. But like you said, even with his injury, he's still one of the best players on this list. Um, so my ninth round pick, I'm going to complete the Towson duo and take Kyle Strong. Um, just another great all around player for, for the Towson Tigers. Uh, really been integral to their success overall throughout the year. So, uh, and it, again, I think you can probably sense a theme in my lineup if you look <laughs> top to bottom at this point. And I think Kyle fits that with his play style as well. Yeah, it's strong pick. Mm-hmm. That was a pun. That was bad. I'll, I'll see myself out. I'll, I'll let you have that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to pick uh, from the next round. I'm going to... You know, enough with the out-of-state picks. I'm going Gabe Carrington from Bowling Green State. Okay. Um, I think Gabe has really come into his own as a leader on this um, Falcons roster. Um, Honestly, didn't really know much about him until this season. You know, he's one of their captains. Uh, Very, very good, accurate throw. But also, his catching is so clutch for this roster. Um, he's brought them out of a lot of sticky situations from his um, catching ability. And it seems to be a theme of BG to really develop their catching abilities. And Gabe is no different. So I'm going to take him. No, Gabe, Gabe's another good, strong, all-around player. And like you said, awesome catcher. Um, I think we're at two ends of the – well, I mean, your team's got capable throwers as well. But I think we're yeah. at two sides of the coin here with our strategy. We are. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so for my next pick, though, uh, I am going to show some love to the University of Miami and take Anna Molenbeek. Um, I need some catching on this team, right? You got to so, gotta round out the, the throwers. Got to get a catch. Yeah, man. I need some defensive prowess players out there. And Anna is that. She's a phenomenal catcher. She makes catch after catch for Miami. Um, great leadership on the court. And I'm just mm-hmm. a huge fan of what she's done to bring that club back from, from the brink this year. So Yeah. Big she's done great there. work. Great work. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it's good to see Miami kind of, you know, developing their talent. They had a, you know, they a lot they were gutted after yeah. after COVID, and so seeing them come back and you know have the success they have this season is is very very good to see. Um, I am going to um, go with the freshman phenom from Saginaw Valley, uh, Cole Michaela. Um, if that's how you pronounce his last I think name, it's Michaela. Michaela. Okay. Yep. I apologize for that, Cole. But um, I watched him at Akron's tournament, and I was ex- so impressed with where he's at in his um, play style and his, you know, format. Just you know, being in his first season, being a rookie, um, he definitely holds that Saginaw roster together. Um, he's so athletic, and you can just tell he's he's caught on to everything they've taught him so quickly. And um, I think he's going to be a a really good part of this roster. No, I couldn't agree more. And they, I think the smartest thing they did was making him a, one of their captains as a rookie. Like, mm-hmm. he's so talented for being so fresh to the game. He, you can just tell how smart of a player he is by how fast he's picked up the strategy and just, like, court awareness and presence for a freshman. Yeah. It, it's uncanny. Um, Cole's a great pick. Uh, so with my next pick in the 11th round of the NCDA All-Star Draft, uh, Team West will be taking Max Anthony of Ohio. Oh, yep. Um, a, a great player for them. I need more catching on this team, more sneaky players that go under the radar around the court. And Max, Max fits that bill. So um, couldn't be happier to have him fall this far. Yes. Good pick. Great pick. Um, in the In the vein of throwers, I'm taking Daniel Fernald from uh, mm. Maryland. Um, he has actually seen a throwing coach, I believe. And so his throws oh, really? come leaps and bounds. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure when he started, but he's been doing it for a while now. And he's also one of uh, Maryland's better catchers as well. Mm. Um, just a really top to bottom good player. Um, I think he'll, he'll see some success on this team I'm, I'm developing here. No, no kidding. I, I'd heard. I guess I'd heard about the throwing coach, but I, I, I didn't know his his throw was that strong. So that that's a good sleeper pick. He's probably yep. going to surprise some people on Saturday morning. Um, 
my next round pick, uh, I got to show some love to some of the kids that we just played from Wisconsin Platteville this past weekend. I'm going to be taking Jacob Sabranek. Oh, um, man. Just a, another good all around strong arm player for, for EWP. Um, they, they really turned some heads, especially on our team this past weekend. You yeah. know, it's, it's tough when you don't, they don't get to get out and play a lot of different teams. Um, and when we saw them at the war, they had a shell of a roster, unfortunately. And so they were out in full force this, big, this past weekend. And, uh, so I, I had to pick one of them up. So he really impressed me at the yeah. war. Um, he made a, an all hands catch above his head, kind of like Jalen Gardner style. And it, yeah, I yeah. was just like in awe. He's, he's a good player. Great pick, Wes. Um, I'm going to follow your lead and uh, go with a um, Midwest player. I'm going with Dustin Sprunk of uh, University of Nebraska Lincoln. Um, haven't been able to see them play this year, but. Uh, they've seen some success over in their region and, you know, him being one of their all-stars, I can only imagine that it's, you know, in large part to him. Uh, so I'm going to take him on, on my side. No, I mean, I, I agree. We, both of us know nothing about UNL cause they, they've only played UWP this season, but mm -hmm. given what I saw this past weekend out of UWP and a couple of their players came up to mine and said, Hey, like if you, you guys had some trouble with us, just wait till you see UNL. Like they're, a lot better than anyone thinks they are. And so I that's that's got to be a good pick, right? Yeah. <laughs> it has to be. Yeah. Um, Logic's there. Right, exactly. No, it just has to be. Um so another player who I think turned some heads and really surprised uh, a lot of people and impressed me, uh UK's captain Tyler Kratzer. He's a very <laughs> strong thrower. Um very crafty on the court. I saw him had have a sequence against, I think it was Ohio, where he got, like, honestly, three or four hits, like, dodged, like, five or six throws, like, just very shifty for him being, like, kind of a stockier got build um, and just really good court presence. So uh, I, I can't wait for UK to have a full team. Um, and I hope this isn't Tyler's last year, but um, mm -hmm. just, he's a strong player, and so I'm, I'm happy to have him on my team. It's a good pick. He was one of the players I was eyeing uh, for my squad, too. Um, I'm going to go back to the inner region pick. I'm picking John Rupp of Ohio. Um, Ohio is another team that kind of didn't, you know, find heat until the second semester. Um, and they've really, really shown that they are, you know, not to be messed around with. Um, you know, they – you know, took a couple teams in overtime at um, the Ohio Dodgeball Cup, and then they really just routed every person they played or every team they played at the war. And so, um, you know, John as a is a big part of that team, and I, I can't wait to see what he does um, in the All-Star game. No, that's another excellent pick. John, I, I got to see him this weekend, uh, and he really stood out for me. He holds out – he holds down uh, Ohio's left side. Really – a Another guy for his size, very sneaky player, looks for those sneaky, opportunistic throws, crosses, um, and, and he can make a big impact on the court for Ohio. Yeah. Um, my next pick will be, and frankly, we're getting to the part of the draft where, to be honest with you guys, I don't know a lot of the names left on here, um, but I'm going to take Matthias Hammond from VCU. If he's their first player, I have to imagine he's he's a good pick, right? Uh, shout out to Hunter. Hunter can probably big him up. Shout out to VCU if you guys would have gotten me some content <laughs> uh, for my player spotlights. I would have something to say about Matthias. That's all right. Yeah, I mean, being one of their all stars, you know, you have to assume he's one of their better players. Um, so that's a that's a that's a good pick on on you, Wes. I am going um, with uh, Kevin. Premsuk uh, from uh, Cleveland State. Uh, I've watched this guy play for a couple years now. He's one of the uh, guys I recognize on Cleveland State's roster. Um, he really holds down his side, his left side. He's got a, a very, very strong throw. It's very, very deceiving because of his size. Um, but he's also a great catcher, and he's really, really hard to get out in his corner. Um, I'm going to take him uh, as my pick. No, uh, that's a good pick. Um... Which player is he from CSU? 
He know. is. Um, he usually wears sweatpants, and so usually he players who wear sweatpants. And I'm like, uh, why are you wearing not wearing shorts, guy? But he uh, he wears yeah. gray sweatpants normally um, on his left side, and he holds down that that left corner for Cleveland State. Okay, no, um, Cleveland State's got some good players. Um, mm-hmm. No, another good sneaky pick there. Um, in that same vein, I'm going to go ahead and take the other CSU player, Jostine Sagnes. Is he the shorter guy on that holds down the right side of the court for them? I believe so. I believe okay. so. I'm yeah. not familiar with Cleveland State's roster this year as much as I'd like to be, but I believe that's who that is. Okay. I, I wish I could give these guys more of a shout-out. I, I just... I, I don't know that much about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're getting down there to where it's a little tough to give some mm-hmm. give character bios. But yeah. speaking of, I'm going with somebody who I'm shocked. You know, I, I, I'm getting this late in the draft. Ellie Schipfer from Miami. Um, there you go. The other, you know, great catcher on that roster. Ellie is just mm-hmm. really, you know, coming to her own as a dodgeball player. Um, one of the better, you know, catchers. Um, in her position in this league, and I'm I'm really happy to get some defense, uh, you know, a good defensive player on my roster this late. And Ellie really does hold down, you know, her side of the court when she's when she's in. And um, you know, it's good to see that Miami has two really strong female leaders on their team, and you know, to help them, you know, develop not only you know the females of this league, the future of the league, but also you know their both Miami's captains, which means that they were trusted to to hold down the entire fort of, you know, Miami's roster. And so that's good to see. Um, I'm going to take her. No, no doubt. Another good pick. Another great catcher, just like you said. Um, mm-hmm. My 16th pick overall, I'm going to be taking Chris Rucker from Saginaw Valley State University. Okay. Yep. Uh, another surprise pick there. Um Again, I don't. I think he's one of their younger players, if I'm not mistaken, Colby. I don't know. Yeah, I don't either, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay, um, I am going with Brady Eck of Penn State. Uh, I don't know much about him. I've I've heard a little bit about him. Um, obviously, being one of their all stars, he's one of their better players. And Penn State's seen some success this year, and so I'm. I'm, you know, betting that he's in, in large part of that. And so I'm excited to take him on my roster. No, honestly, that's like such a steal to take him this late in, in this yeah. in the draft. Um, Penn State, one of the top 10 teams in the league. And mm-hmm. he's their second best player or, you know, voted as such. Yeah. Got to be talented. Uh, so my next pick will be in kind of the vein that you went in taking uh, Dustin Sprunk. I'm going to take Ethan Glenn from UNL. All right. Another one where it's like we haven't seen UNL play, but he's got to be good, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the that's the logic here, and that's you know yeah. hoping it works out for us. <laughs> um, I'm well, gonna we go with one, so we're we're hedging our bets here. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going with Ethan Hale Pate from Kentucky. Um, haven't seen Kentucky as much as I would have liked to. Um, but they've had some really strong points, and so I'm excited to see what he does um, come Nationals weekend. Mm-hmm. No, I got to see him play this weekend. He's he's strong arm. You'll be happy with him. Good, good. Uh, so my next pick, I will be taking UMD's other player, Connor Ingle. Don't know much about him. Yep. That happens this late. Um, speaking of East Coast talent, I'm taking Drew Vandenberg of uh, – VCU. Uh, again, don't know much about him. Um, hopefully Hunter and Shadid can give me the East Coast endorsement of this player. True. All right. Uh, I will be taking with my last pick, Kyle Rinke. Um, strong arm has to be, you know, for UWP. He's my Mr. Irrelevant, mm-hmm. um, but I- I'm sure he'll be a great addition to this roster. Colby, who is the Mr. Irrelevant? Ryan Aller of Western Michigan, a home team favorite. Uh, I'm excited that he fell this late. Don't know much about him. Uh, you know, they had a, uh, a decent showing this semester. And, you know, Ryan uh, being voted as one of their all-stars, I'm assuming he's a good part of that. And so I'm happy to take him this late. 
No, no doubt. Uh, so there you have it, folks. There's our drafts. Um, you know, line by line, pick by pick. Uh, let us know in the comments on on YouTube and on our uh, you know Facebook post, social media, all that good stuff. Uh, what you think of our drafts? Who you think is going to win on uh, April 9th? You can roast us if our picks or our pronunciation of names are horrible. Yep, or roast us for our homer picks. Um, anything along those lines. Uh, with that being said, uh, we'll give you guys a lasting look for a second. It is now time. Uh, give me one second to adjust my screen to unveil the all-star jerseys for this weekend. So the theme is white and black and one second here colby there we go and i think you guys will be pretty pumped about these these are pretty good hunter got these from kbs is that the no moneyball sportswear shout out to to rebecca again local company in east lansing so there it is guys so Colby, his team will be wearing the black uniforms, and my team will be wearing the white uniforms, unless uh, Peter has anything to say about it. <laughs> he doesn't, because I'm pretty sure we've already ordered them. So yeah, there's a game called Dibs, and West lost, and he's pretty salty about it, but it's okay. Yeah, I did lose Dibs, but uh, I think it was rigged. Anyway, there it is, guys. There's our All Star jerseys. There's our All Star draft. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, like I said before, leave us a comment in, uh, in the section below and let us know what you think about our drafts, about the jerseys, uh, and how excited you guys are for Nationals. Can't wait. Good luck, Wes. Yeah, you too, Colby. Your team's going to need it. <laughs> we'll see.